Are you ready to wave your grades? Will you be ready when the school year ends? Welcome to Wave Your Grades, the radio broadcast on KUAW Internet Radio where serious American students tell how they are thanking military veterans by preparing all school year for our end of year Wave Your Grades parade. We thank our military and our school staff program guests for joining us and encouraging and supporting our students all year as they get ready for this parade. Now, here is our Stoots for Boots Wave Your Grades host, civilian Carl Boyd. Thank you so very, very much to Quay Wilson. Uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is a wonderful, wonderful reunion. As a matter of fact, today, Saturday, September 1st, 2018, is our first program back on Wave Your Grades uh, since we took a brief hiatus. Uh, we took a moment. I am blessed to have the most wonderful wife in the world who uh, cares for her mom along with her siblings, and we took some time off uh, to be with them. And she has allowed me to come back on the radio Saturday afternoons at 1 o'clock. But let me tell you, Blues Brothers, why it's wonderful to get the band back together. It turns out uh, Dr. Anthony Madry of Central uh, Academy of Excellence that everyone whom you see in the studio at the tables and at the microphones were with Stutes for Boots when Wave Your Grades was on KUAWFM before and we're all back together. I cannot thank God enough. So I certainly want to say a very special thank you to Lewis George Walker, President, Black Family Technology Awareness Association and founder of KUAWFM. And by the way, I know that it has been said, but since it's our first opportunity back on the air, let me remind our listeners that KUAW stands for Knowledge, Understanding, and Wisdom. KUAW, 98.5 FM, here at the W.E.B. Du Bois Learning Center represents a teaching learning radio station. A very special thank you also to Valencia Bradas, who uh, is not only present and helpful in her own right, but she introduces us to stellar students. And uh, we will talk about their agreement to be with us regularly, and she will tell us how regularly. A gentleman to my right happens to don uh, the colors crimson and cream, and uh, Every once in a while, you will hear us mention that, and it does not by any means uh, diminish the contributions of all Greek letter organizations, but he happens to be one of my Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity brothers. His name is Frank Kurtdahl, and once again, praise the Lord, the band is back together on Wave Your Grades. Before we introduce our very, very special guests uh, this morning, I would like to just explain for some who might be joining us for the first time since we are just uh, back now, that there are three particular segments to Wave Your Grades on KUAW. And Anthony Madry is largely responsible for that and he will find out precisely how as we go along. <laughs> but Wave Your Grades has always had the connotation that 
for young people in the United States of America who, matri who are matriculating, particularly at our secondary schools, but elementary and secondary schools, we suggest that it's not quite enough to wave the flag, to say thank you to our veterans, to our military. But are you able to wave your grades? Are you able to wave your community service? Are you able uh, to waive your extracurricular activities? Are you able to waive your perfect attendance? Are you able to waive the fact that you have turned around from the wrong direction? And I'm going to get some help from uh, Lewis George Walker uh, right quick. We will get uh, into the program. But I wanted to offer for Anthony Madry, whose school Central Academy of Excellence is partnering with Stutes for Boots in our Wave Your Grade effort. And DeQuay, I wanted to try to see if I can remember all of the words or most of the words to the theme for the parade and the program. And indeed, it is Wave Your Grades. So this time, Lewis George Walker, if you would, let's uh, try cut number two, which is instrumental, and I'll say the words, and of course, uh, DeQuay, Frank Curtin, all Valencia brought us, if you can help me out, I don't mind that either, <laughs> but uh, let us indeed cut to uh, Brother Madry, this is Wavy Grades. In this parade, please wave your grades at the brave who fight for you. I think you got the other cut. I'm doubling up. How about, uh, all right, we'll do go to cut two. This is two? All right, I'll, I'll try it again. No problem at all. I am so glad to be back with Brother Lewis George Walker and some will find out the pioneer he truly is and what this station means. In this parade, please wave your grades at the brave who fight for you. If you don't gain, they fight in vain. Show them what you can do. Show them what you can do. Please show them what you can do. I said, in this parade, please wave your grades at the brave who fight for you. If you don't gain, they fight in vain. Show them what you can do. Show them what you can do. Please show them what you can do. You make this parade a mere charade if you're marching just for fun. Our troops must feel your thanks for real before the marching is done. They know side by side you can match their stride to the drumbeat and the brass, but they're not impressed with you unless you can match their stride in class. This may not sound too diplomatic, but I cannot be more emphatic as I tell you, it's problematic when you do less than your best, especially when it's because you put your brilliance on pause for the mere peer applause it draws from so-called friends doing less. Quit playing. I'm saying, we know that you are great, and you know it, so show it. Don't make our heroes wait. In this parade, please wave your grades at the brave who fight for you. If you don't gain, they fight in vain. Show them what you can do. Show them what you can do. Please show them what you can do. For those of you who already do the things that make us proud, your nation in appreciation says thanks to you out loud. Your schoolmates should imitate the way you tap your potential let me try to convince them why their effort is essential. Our men and women in uniform before, during, and after Desert Storm always perform above the norm everywhere and anywhere on the planet. Your peers should follow our heroes' lead, but they cannot follow if they cannot read. Allow me, please, to plant this seed. Don't take freedom for granted. I'm serious, I'm furious, to see U.S. schools behind. No excuses. All we got to do is just make up our minds. In this parade, please wave your grades at the brave who fight for you. If you don't gain, they fight in vain. Show them what you can do. 
Show them what you can do. Please show them what you can do. We believe in you. Warriors protect you too. Do what you must to rise. So please do your part and please start before another warrior dies. In this parade, please wave your grades at the brave who fight for you. If you don't gain, they fight in vain. Show them what you can do. Show them what you can do. Please show them what you can do. They sacrifice for you. Show them what you can do. Please show them what you can do. Please. So that is <laughs> the theme song. <laughs> 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 for those who are listening on the radio, that is a round of applause for an old man <laughs> having uh, some degree of memory. But uh, Valencia, before you bring on the young people, let me ask Anthony Madry to introduce for some people, Brother Madry, even alumni, the new Central Academy of Excellence. And I cannot thank you enough for joining us on this day and just Bring us up to date and let us know what we're in for 2018, 2019. Here is Anthony Madry, Principal, Central Academy of Excellence. Well, first of all, uh, I want to thank you for bringing me on, Carl. Our brother Boyd, he uh, keeps mentioning the Crimson and Cream. And <laughs> I tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be a part of a family and an organization like that. But to be the uh, Principal at Central Academy of Excellence is a privilege. It's not something that I take for granted. The community that I serve is probably the most powerful and most embedded community of uh, Kansas City. This community is starting to see uh, change. And when I say change, uh, when I got here in 2016, in, in uh, June of 2016, there was no grocery store in this community. We now have a grocery store. When I got here uh, in 2016, uh, my attendance or my enrollment was right uh, below 400, it was probably closer to 350, and uh, now Central's enrollment is right about 500. Oh. Um, and and, mm -hmm. and speaking of it from a term of accomplishment, uh, my football team was about 12 kids, 12 to 15 kids. Wow. We boast of about 60 kids playing football now. Mm -hmm. Last year we took part of the IL title. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we can boast of having the MVP of the Missouri Kansas All Star Game. Uh, year one in 2016, our basketball team went something like five and 18. And last year, they came in second in district, winning 20 plus games. Uh, academically, we have students growing by leaps and bounds. One of my students scored a three on his AP test, mm -hmm. and uh, people are really stunned because they're like, "We've never had a three over there," you know. And uh, the deal is, is that we run a real school. Uh, Rick Smith, the chief of police, stopped in my office on August 11th for our back to school rally. And he said, you know, I, I look at everything that's going on over here. I just had to come see for myself. And uh, what I will say to you is we are part of a community and we're going to be the centerpiece of that community. And uh, with all the changes that we've done from 2016, from adding a turf football field uh, with the Parks and Recreation Department, Another brother of Crimson Cream, Jordan Brown, <laughs> helped us get that that done. Uh, and then uh, we, we uh, celebrated Jack Bush uh, by uh, naming part of our gymnasium or part of our school after him. Wow. And we put a new court in for him to have uh, people in the community that have uh, achieved certain things. This man taught for 50 years, took young people to uh, heights that they had never experienced uh, kids playing pro basketball it's it's unbelievable but to celebrate him the district policy is that we cannot name anything after a person for uh at least 10 years okay uh, after their death yes sir why celebrate a man after death when he's still here give him his roses while he's still in place yes sir and when i say uh probably about 1200 1500 people came out to celebrate this man it was an unbelievable experience and so that, that changes the neighborhood. But we have one more change coming for this year. Yes, sir. Academically, uh, we are really pushing our students to, to uh, 
achieve levels they've never achieved academically. Our graduation rate is on the rise, our attendance rate is on the rise, but uh, the thing that many of the people in the community want to hear about is uh, we will be submitting letters on Tuesday to Dr. Bedell for the name of Central Academy of Excellence to be changed back to Central High School. Oh, is that right? The community has, uh, the first time I met with the community in uh, June of 2016, that was one of the first things they asked me for. Is that right? They said, we want the name Central High School back. And when you start thinking through it, that is history. Yes. We're the oldest school, I want to say, east of the Mississippi. And when you start thinking about that kind of history, you want to go back to your roots. Uh, as we start to achieve and go back to what Central used to be, let's go back to the name that it used to be called. I will definitely uh, want to visit that more. And by the way... Uh, DeQuay Wilson, Valencia Broadus, Frank Kirkall, if you have questions and or comments for our very special uh, guest, Anthony Madry, please chime in. It turns out you made mention of the IL, the Interscholastic League, and I had uh, the privilege while sitting in your office to meet a very special young gentleman <laughs> who happened to be, was it Coach of the Year or what yes, was it was, that he earned? He was earned? the uh, Coach of the Year last year, uh, Darren Young. He's my new yes. athletic director. Young guy, uh, he came in from St. Louis. He, uh, one of the things that I knew when I hired him, he played for a guy that I knew in Texas, and, uh, Coach Lee. And when he told me he played for Coach Lee, I knew I was going <laughs> to get discipline. I knew I was going to get intelligence. Yes, sir. I knew I was going to get quality and character. So uh, Darren Young is really going to be the face of athletics for Kansas City Public Schools in the very, very near future, in the very br br bright future ahead of them as a, uh, an athletic director and as a coach and teacher. One of the things uh, that will be very important as we do Wave Your Grades every Saturday, talking about leading up to the Wave Your Grades Parade, and I want to broach that uh, in a moment uh, with uh, Anthony Madry. Uh, before we do, let me indicate to everybody who is listening, watching, and participating that there are three facets to our program for this year. And once again, you will find out why it is that Anthony Madry is key to these three facets of our program. What we're doing with this title now, Wave Your Grades, is assigning a very special meaning to it because it does lead up to the end of the school year parade. And Brother Madry, I talk about three facets of the program. Number one, number one is stellar students, student stars. And on first Saturdays, uh, the person who is responsible for introducing them to us is Valencia Abrados. Uh, number two, is relevant resources so that we will be talking about those who are bringing to the table resources that our students need to indeed achieve. And number three, the reason we're making the tribute at all is military motivators. So in uh, the student stars and the relevant resources and military motivators, what we are attempting to say is we refuse to allow military personnel to sacrifice for us and not be excellent in school. And while we talk about the coincidence of color that the three of us happen to be, the Crimson and the Cream, members of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, we are not going to talk about the Kansas City, Missouri School District without talking about Dr. Mark Bedell who is the superintendent of schools, who happens uh, to be a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, and where Greek letter organizations are concerned, we are remiss if we don't cooperate with each other in the kind of leadership we've earned from our various organizations. So, Brother Madry, if you'll hold on just a moment, let me ask Valencia Broadus to tell us about joining the band again, coming back for the 2018-2019 school year, and to let us know about the young people she has brought with her. 
We're glad to be back. That's all we want to say. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank we got you. a couple of parents. We'll give some shout outs that are in the other room. They're Facebooking or whatever. Okay. Because I'm not a social like I do social understand. thing person. But I wanted to give that <laughs> shout out to the parents um, for, for bringing their young people uh, d down today. And so that um, I was sharing with one of the moms that Miss uh, Syria and then Miss Deanna they had cornered you at a Wednesday roundtable <laughs> session and said, so are you going to do this again? And, um, and they wanted to be a part. And so I really, really appreciate the kids asking, recognizing who you are. And I know sometimes you don't think people know who you are. The young people, they know who you are. Well, too. So they, it's pretty uh, exciting. The young um, people who know me are 60 now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm going to stop there regarding that we're excited to be back. But I would like, though, for... Um, the young people, if they want to, just come beside me and say hello really quick. And so, um, come on up. We have first just Miss Deanna. Just kind of say who you are really quick. <laughs> My name is Deanna Moore. I've been doing an internship with Miss Valencia for most of the summer, and it's been a really amazing opportunity to get to work with her and get to know her and have, be able to learn so much from her. What's your career goal? My goal is to become a lawyer in criminal justice. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's okay, how, school and year in school. Oh uh, yeah, I'm in my senior year at Shawnee Mission Northwest High School in um, Lenexa, Kansas, and it's <laughs> senior year. I thought it was gonna go by really slow, and it was gonna be really fun, and it was just gonna be a game, but it's not. I'm in a few honors and AP classes, and so far that's been really fun getting to know. Get, to meet new people and see the diff the separation between like just regular classes and then the AP classes where things move a lot quicker, but we get a lot more knowledge. All right. Amen. Amen. And, and then we'll bring that. One of the things that we do a lot with our Smart Career Club is we help young leaders year round to catch a dream and make it grow. And so whether, as you all know, it's our ACT prep or our mentoring or um, we take students on college visits and ACT, of course, do a lot of that. So we like one of our um, our alumni who's here for this short <laughs> Labor Day break here from college. And so Get please out say of hello. Here. Hi, yes, my name is Heaven, and um, I I was in the career club for a few years actually, and it's one of the things that really helped me with that community service, scholarships, entrepreneurship, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm in what my. I went to and graduated from Lincoln College Preparatory Academy, yes. Um, I'm currently a freshman um, in uh, Jury University. It's in uh, Springfield, Missouri, about three hours away from here. All right, all right. Heaven, I was looking at you sitting over there, and I said, now, Heaven is going to come up <laughs> and say I'm a sophomore at Lincoln College Preparatory Academy. <laughs> it has been that long. Yes. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, time flies. It, it really does. Amen. And the great thing about Miss Heaven is that um, with her being with us for so many years yes. and seeing the other young people that we do the ACT, send them to college, get them really ready for the rigor yes. of college. Because yes. it's not a joke. It's not tell tell Miss Deanna it's not a joke. It's not All good. right. One of the sisters, <laughs> come on up. Come on up. Another sister. Which one? All right. We're going to have Miss Jalen. Please say hello. Hello. And tell who you are, please. <laughs> I'm Jalen Hart. And I'm a junior at East High School. I KCPS. just became KCPS. a junior. <laughs> I just became a junior this year. Yep. And I'm ready to graduate. So <laughs> what's something some you've been to do though, real quick? Um, like, <laughs> I'm gonna get good grades, I know that. <laughs> what's what you, what your career goal, beautiful lady? Um, right now, I don't know. I used to want to be um, uh, OBGYN, but I don't really know and it's, it's okay to change that, 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 it's that's about exactly catching that right. dream and keep on going all right now before your sister comes up i want to tell them thank you because just like their older sister miss heaven the twins they were making money and so it's sometimes it's hard to get students when they're working to take time off to come and do the stuff that will still grow your mind so i really want to thank you again and mom i know you're out listening so that's thank outstanding you for them taking off to to do this as well. We All right, really thank you. appreciate that. And so, that. does the other sister want to come and say hi? She better come Yay, and say hi. Come on, please. Come on up come on here. Please. Hi. <laughs> My name is Jasmine, and I'm a junior at um, East High School. Ooh. Amen. <laughs> and um, I want to be a 
vet when I grow up. I think because I wanted to be a orthopedic surgeon, but I guess it's a long time in school for that. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's worth it. It's I, worth it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But there's like a ton of different things, and I'm good with animals. And you like science. And you like man. Yeah. Good combination. I mean, job shit's <laughs> kind of hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as long as I get some Twitter, it'll be all right. All right. And so what's something, what's something you're preparing for pretty quick? ACT. ACT. We got to make it happen. Oh. So, now there's another young lady that's in the room and she's brain right now, so she may not want to talk with this yet, but I wanted just for really them to talk more and then I'll kind of move away um, as, as you need because it's really about them telling you what they're doing, getting ready and spreading that word to their peers. And so um, can I switch with you, Heaven, and then you guys switch as you need? Is that okay, Mr. That's Boyd? fine. I'm with you. And as a matter of fact, this is Wave Your Grades. We are on... KUAW 98.5, and we get an opportunity now to have an exchange with Principal Madry here, an alumnus from uh, Lincoln College Prepar Preparatory Academy, Frank Kirkdall DeQuay uh, Wilson. A gentleman is here, by the way, I said, student stars, relevant resources, and then military motivators. Among those relevant resources and a partner to Stutes for Boots is an organization called Men of Vision and Empowerment. And I know that you were going to come and take some photos, but I'm not sure whether or not you had something that you wanted to say. But if you would just uh, very quickly introduce yourself and just say what Men of uh, Vision and Empowerment stands for, We'll do that right quick and then move heaven right back into that seat. But welcome to uh, Wave Your Grades. Go right ahead. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm here to represent Men of Vision and Empowerment. My name is Denard Foreman, and we're here to uh, mentor the youth in the community. And, yes, sir. Uh, and shelter them. Also, along with our sister group, Ladies of Vision and Empowerment, right. which stand for love. So we're here to help out with the youth. Well, let me, I wanted you to uh, sit there for those two seconds just to give an opportunity for Stutes for Boots to say publicly, thank you for supporting our organization, including uh, monetary support for our billboard campaign and some other things that we are doing. So, Brother Denard, take all the photos you like, okay. and uh, thank you very much for being with right, us. thanks for having us. You're more than welcome. All right, Heaven, you may come back and... Uh, Brother Madry, uh, I, I hope that I am not um, keeping you too long. I thought I heard you tell someone uh, that you would be through by about 1.30. Our program actually goes until 2 o'clock. Oh, it's so okay. It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. They oh. know I'm going to put them off and I'm going to keep putting them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, what, uh, this is what I wanted to, to do. We met because of you because of uh, Central Academy of Excellence, uh, and we are with you perhaps uh, soon to be, maybe definitely soon to be, Central High School once again because of that outstanding tradition with JROTC um, instructors mm -hmm. across the district to agree upon having our Wave Your Grades Parade at the end of the school year hosted by Central, and I'm saying that on the air, taking a chance, but uh, tell us your thoughts on that and your views about what that can do. You know, when we, when we brought up uh, Darren Young earlier, we asked, do you have any questions? And the first question he asked was, what is my team's GPA? What is their ACT score? Thank what you. is the average ACT score? And all of us looked at each other because we didn't have an answer for him. Because wow. we never looked at athletic programs from a standpoint of grade point averages and ACT scores. So Darren Young put that on our radar. So now we're looking at kids, we're profiling kids all the way around. We have a room dedicated to just looking at uh, students and how we can mm. you know, uh, build this student. What do we need to put into that student? You can't tell what a student needs until you know what a student doesn't have or what a student does have. And so when we, when we look at this whole parade thing, this whole celebration that you're speaking of, uh, Brother Boyd, um, 
it's one of those things that our ROTC uh, department may be one of our strongest departments in our building. Mm -hmm. uh, Lieutenant Colonel Neal, Alexis Neal, is one of the finest people we could find to run our program. And uh, he has taken on many facets of the program from senior class sponsor to uh, being over concessions and fundraising for the building. The ROTC or JROTC program in our building, they will begin uh, doing the weekly opening and closing of the colors each week. They will post the colors each week and, uh, and take the col colors down. We will have our 9-11 celebration or uh, our recognition or memorial on 9-11. On uh, many people have forgotten, but our students, we will never let forget. And so with you wanting to do this, our students are excited. They participated in the parade this morning, and they're looking forward to any opportunity to celebrate and, and bring uh, recognition to the different programs to our community. Well, I want to uh, get Brother Frank Kurtdahl ready to help us to understand what student accomplishment means to veterans as he is one. Before doing that, and while you contemplate that question, Brother Kurt Dahl, I want heaven to help us with something. Okay. Anthony Madry is looking at a school that has tradition and emphasizing academics along with other kinds of participation. Heaven graduated from Lincoln College Preparatory Academy she was in attendance at a time, Valencia brought us, when it was known throughout the state of Missouri that one of our leading schools was Lincoln College Preparatory Academy. And heaven, in one sense, can kind of help your students understand what they're in for, being at the top of the academic ladder, what is expected of them, and how it feels to be a part of that kind of climate. Can you speak to that for us, please, heaven? Yes, um, well, with Lincoln, you know, the, the coursework and stuff, very rigorous, and um, test, test scores are very important. So, um, I mean, of course, to get those test, good test scores, you know, you need study, to study and all that stuff, but also to, con to connect with your teachers because um, those, if you don't understand what's going on in the class, whatever, the teachers do care, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you should always get close with your teachers, any questions or anything like that. Um, but as far as like the school, I mean, as, I mean, it's a great feeling to be a, going to a school that you know is known around the state for being like, well, was known formerly being the best school in the state, just academic wise. And um, it also puts more pressure, you know, um, not wanting to let the school down, you know, with grades and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I can't. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they also had a great uh, GROTC program that I participated in for two years, my junior and senior year. And they do they did way more than just um, just focusing on like army things. They did like college prep stuff, um, exercise every week. That was very important. They did um, college admission stuff. They did a lot of things that really helped that usual normal classes don't do like finance and stuff like that. They didn't. And I really think, I really try to encourage every student to take that class in high school because it can really help. Right. Yes. This is fantastic. Go ahead, please. Well, what I was going to say to you, Evan, uh, see, at Central, we typically try to put all ninth graders in our on JROTC. And it's developmental. And the whole deal is that discipline, that discipline that, uh, that I received when I was in band Many kids aren't getting that discipline just to, to dot I's and cross T's and just to complete tasks. And so when you started talking about your experience in JROTC, I can see it because they're looking to build the whole student. And so you can see it in just how you're, you're, you're carrying yourself right now. So Let me remind those who are listening and, as a matter of fact, via Facebook watching, that this is Wave Your Grades, and we are on KUAW. And uh, DeQuay, before you uh, uh, jump in, I'm going to see if I can get Lewis George Walker to take the microphone for just a moment. Lewis Walker, president, Black Family Technology Awareness Association, founder of KUAW. This is our first Saturday back. Yes. And when we left, we didn't have as much access to the station. So I was saying, 
KUAW.org, I was saying KUAW 98.5. But if I am going to give the call letters and tell complete access, how can those to whom we advertise the program tune in? All right, right now, we're, we're a internet station uh, primarily now. It's KUAW Global Community Radio. All right. And we can be picked up on Facebook Live whenever we're doing live shows. We're picked up 24 hours a day at the TuneIn app. If you have the TuneIn app, then you can get all of our broadcasts 24. When we're not on here live, we broadcast other talk shows and some music. And stuff. Uh, then when we're live, we're on Facebook. So all of our live shows are streamed on Facebook, and then we upload them to, tune, uh, to YouTube. So you can pick us up on Facebook, YouTube, TuneIn, or at our website, www.kuaw.org. And that's our own server that broadcasts 24 hours a day. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we appreciate that and appreciate the opportunity to have Wave Your Grades on kuaw.org. DeQuay Wilson is our announcer, and I indicated that I would ask uh, Frank Kurtdahl just to reflect on what it means to those who are currently in the military, those who have been, to have American students in our own community pledging excellence in honor of our troops. I would say as a non-parent that I'm encouraged when I see this quality of student and scholar and academia, uh, with academia, that it just suggests that we're in good hands for those individuals that are going to be creating the laws and enforcing the laws that determine whether or not soldiers are put in harm's way or not. Mm -hmm. So it's very practical that an individual that is about their business, it would, you, you would, it would be in our best uh, interest for people to be knowledgeable about how they go about things. But I would imagine right now, if I was deployed serving somewhere across the, the globe, one of the best indicators of how my household is doing is how my child's doing. And that's it. if they're doing well in school, that would, I would imagine for me, that would settle my heart wow. as I'm out serving my country in different places. But I just think that from that personal standpoint, having your child doing well, I think that that's encouraging. And then as a 46-year-old that desires to, to retire one day, knowing that they're going to be at the helm and steering this country, it's encouraging. And then as soldiers, again, knowing that you have knowledgeable intelligent individuals to create and enforce the laws that determine where they're deployed, I think it's very practical from that standpoint. You know what, uh, DeQuay, I, I, I mentioned uh, DeQuay Wilson, along with myself. My name is Carl Boyd, host of uh, Wave Your Grades. We're on KUAW. When uh, uh, you and I are being invested from the beginning in the program, hear someone like Frank Kurtdahl, who is a veteran, say what he says, it brings to mind something that we cannot emphasize enough. And that is, as you look to these young people to forge a future that is peaceful, it needs to be understood that we are not a recruiting mechanism. We want to pay honor so that as our young people study, they can study war no more. But if somebody is going to make the sacrifice, you cannot look in a hero's eyes and be a student who never tries. It just does not work. So we appreciate you having that perspective that it's not all about war. But when I get home, the future is in the hands of young people like this. And that's what you look to. That's, that's a blessing. We, we appreciate that. And that means, uh, Brother Madry, uh, Sister Heaven, that the JROTC experience can be important for any number of reasons. I went to Lynn Bloom High School, Chicago, Illinois, and I was the uh, captain of the precision drill team and the leader of the competition platoon and all those kinds of things. But let it be unequivocal that if you are not in JROTC, that does not disqualify you from getting the kind of grades exactly. <laughs> and exactly. participating at a high level. So, Brother Kurt Dahl, thanks for pointing us in the right direction. And uh, 
let me ask uh, the young lady who is at the microphone now about not just aspirations, but personal experiences and what you're looking forward to next year because you will be graduating. <laughs> is that correct? Yeah, so yeah, tell us about it. All right, get close to that microphone <laughs> and tell us what you're looking forward to. Well, some of the things I'm looking forward to, not just graduating, but being able to say that I, that it wasn't, I know some people worry about if they're going to graduate and if they're going to graduate on time. And I'm, I'm blessed that that wasn't necessarily my testimony. Like walking into the school year this year, I really only needed three credits to graduate. Some of the classes were senior only classes that I couldn't take before. And one of the other credits was when I transferred to the new school because I used to go to school. I used to go to Ruskin High School. So it wasn't. I know that some people, like my mom, when she was in high school, she struggled to get her grades right at the end of the year so she could graduate. And I know I'm just blessed that that's not my testimony. So going into the year, I was able to take some of the extracurricular classes that would look good for colleges, especially for my major, like creative writing, writer's workshops, speech, right. and things like that, honors debate. Um, and I'm really looking forward to debating this year the topic is immigration, so that'll Good be topic. interesting. Last year, the topic was education, and we ran into cases like um, STEM plans and GEDs for prison. That was a case that I ran a year before mm. that. It was our, we were debating about our relationship with China, so each year it's really interesting. Next semester, my favorite class will probably be forensics because in that, um, in that class, it's like debate. We go to tournaments and we compete. There are different events that you can compete in. My favorite is poetry. Um, I do open mic at my school whenever we have poetry competitions. And I'm trying to be more active in my school this year. I've been going to more events and I'm just really excited to see what this year has for me. And I'm excited, more excited to graduate high school, not so I can be done with education, just so I can go to the next chapter and see what college has in store for me. Watch this. I was a second semester junior when my counselor said, congratulations, Frank, you didn't flunk anything and kept it moving. I had, <laughs> she spoke with my peers who were handling their business about ACT, SAT, and I never took either. I was blessed at the time that in Kansas, if you graduated from an accredited high school, you had entrance into the universities, and I was able to get an a undergraduate and a master's degree. I was a late starter, but I'm just encouraged to hear someone who goes into their senior year excited and focused about handling their business. That wasn't your testimony. My testimony was my dad told me, son, you need to take a summer school course just so you can be on, on par to graduate in your high school senior year. So one thing I would encourage, not necessarily you, because it sounds like you have yourself in place, when I was listening to you sing the lyrics of your song, there's a portion in there where it's explaining the kids not to allow their social network to cause them to dumb down. And then there's another section of it that would basically inspire me to say, if you're going to be a part of a group, if you're going to play follow the leader, be the leader, because you could pull your your friends GPAs up just by showing them wow. how being positive and being about your business can be beneficial so I applaud you Frank Kurt Dahl, appreciate that so much brother Madry you were listening and yeah, attentively and I mean I'm, I'm listening because <clears throat> she's you know my band director used to say self discipline son self discipline and I'm listening to you look at building yourself it's like you have figured out hey I need this I need this I need when I get up in the morning, I need I, I need to take a shower. I need to lotion down. I, all these things. And it's like you have figured out. I need this, this, and this, so I can be complete at the very end. Not based on credits and on numbers, but based on what you want to see yourself as when you graduate. And so, just like you said, you want to graduate to go on to the next chapter. That mindset is going to change a lot of other people's mindset because because you can do it and go to the next chapter, other people are gonna feel like they can do it. And that's big. No, go ahead, were you gonna respond? And by the way, say your name again. My name is Deanna Moore. Mm -hmm. So actually like the thing with surrounding myself with people and trying to help them, like I realized in my English class that I have a friend 
and we have these weekly vocab quizzes in my class and every week we me and my friend get together and or before the test we study together we quiz each other and when I realized that like his grades and his the way he performed on tests was it was helping him his grades were increasing as well as my own yes so us studying together like it really helps both of us just just listening to you brings too many things to mind and I'll tell you one thing that you, you just made me think about and she was talking about uh, brother Madry studying together and I remember a time uh, maybe a couple of decades ago there were people talking about Prairie View's football record and it was not stellar oh, and was we had the occasion to talk oh, about sorry. Oh, really? I didn't know you were... I remember I was from the Houston area, and so yes, I saw this firsthand. Uh, so I had friends that played on that team. But here was the thing. There were people who were talking about that, but they could not avoid talking about when you go to Prairie View, you will be in study groups. Yes. When you look at alumni and the engineers who have come out of Prairie View... My brother's one of them. Is so that right? My brother's an engineer from Prairie View. So Many of my friends. When, when I hear uh, Deanna talking about getting together with somebody to study, mm -hmm. there are so many things that having this particular group with us, DeQuay Valencia, for your bringing these young people mean uh, so many things that it, it means to us because unfortunately, geographically, there are those who would stereotype the kind of students that are engaged or not engaged. And we have the audacity on a weekly basis to be able to bring stellar students who are talking to an academic leader in Anthony Madry who are saying no longer Will anybody be able to look in this direction, the Kansas City, Missouri School District or the Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas area, and stereotype our students because of what they're hearing right here? I'm going to ask uh, for something, and I pray that um, uh, I pray that I'm not out of order, but I just have a feeling that I know the answer to the question because of our interaction. Uh, some of the young people have indeed met DeQuay Wilson before. Brother Madry, I don't know uh, how well you know Sister DeQuay, our announcer. Uh, it, it, it turns out in our Kansas City uh, community, uh, her leadership was inevitable, whatever happened. But as it turns out, her son Cortez was murdered in 2013. This is her son this is some they're, they're like this and she and I have had enough conversations for me to be able to ask of DeQuay when you look at that relationship and that legacy and you see these young people doing what they're doing how does it make you feel as that mom to see these young people striving and doing what they're doing at about the same age as was Cortez at the time. Uh, well, first I want to make a correction. He was murdered in 2010. 2010. Um, he was 17. He was 17. Yes. Um, when I look at these, first of all, we all know, anyone in this room knows that Valencia has some amazing youth yes. in her presence. She keeps some amazing youth in her presence. Yes. And um, I think it's a blessing that she continues to inspire them to be even more amazing than they already started out to be. But what it does for me is on one end, it brings up feelings that are not necessarily pleasurable because mm -hmm. it reminds me of mm -hmm what my son has missed out on or what he will miss out on. But at the, on the other hand, however, it reassures me that as many of you have heard me say before, that 
the direction of our country is not necessarily in peril because we have some extraordinary leaders that are coming that are moving forward that are going to take these leadership roles and that I, and when you listen to them especially over the years and you listen to our youth we know that they have not only intelligence but they have aspirations they have dreams they have goals and they have the desire to reach those goals um, so it reassures me that it's not going to be necessarily so bad after all but before we get out of here I have a question for Dr. Madry um, I was a student at Central Junior for one year. My son, Cortez, was a student at Central Senior, well, Central Academy of Excellence, his freshman and sophomore year. My question for you, you speak about how academics has improved, how graduation rates have improved since you've been there. I know that one of the things that encourages this behavior or this progression is the interest that the adults in the students' lives play. My question for you is, in addition to, um, and that's not to say, I don't wanna come across as though I wanna sound like teachers have never cared, especially teachers at Central, but my question, or staff, my question for you is, what do you think has happened or transpired or changed since you've been at Central that has caused such an improvement? Mm -hmm. Good question. So, what I would say, uh, June 27th, I walked up to the school, and there was summer school going on, and when I walked up, a lady was yelling at her child, cursing his child like the child had a tail. I couldn't intervene because I didn't know the parent, nor did I know that child. So, I walked on into the building, I'm watching everything going on, and then I see security checking kids in, vice principals, Put your bag down. Do this. Do that. I told you to do, go over there. And I walked into my office, and I'm looking at all of this. And when I walked in my office, I put my head down, and I, I and just like my fingers are intercrossed right now, I was like, God, why did you put me in? This is prison. Oh, my God. This is, this is like a prison. Because that's another question. <laughs> and so <laughs> when I saw that, I prayed. If you ever get a chance to go to the Central, when you walk up to my office, you can see straight through it. There's glass on the front side and glass on the back side. When I got there, it was all covered up. You couldn't see in. And the deal is, is that when I prayed, God put upon my heart love, honor, and respect. I got to love my kids. My kids know I love them. I honor the commitment that I made when I said I was going to be a teacher, an educator that I'm going to educate any kid that crosses this threshold, give them my very best, and then respect. And when I said that to the staff, all of them were like, yeah, they gotta respect me. No, yeah, you have to respect them. them. Respect where they come from. We have an early childhood development center. 16 students are able to bring uh, children and have them go through a daycare process while they are able to go to school. I respect where my kids come from. 59% of the kids at my school are high mobility, meaning that many of them are homeless. I respect where they come from. I got a call at 447 in the morning. Well, let's Mr. Madrid, can, I, can you help me go to take a shower? Forgive me for interrupting, and this is the era of respect. Aretha Franklin was just yes, on sir. everybody's minds all week, but we only have two minutes. Jalen, we only have two minutes. I cannot believe, but uh, you didn't put it on too late. It's so <laughs> well, no, it's you partly my fault. It, it is partly my fault. It's mostly my fault. Thank you very much. I don't, uh, uh, Jalen. If you could, if you could do thirty-five or forty seconds worth of greetings from the Smart Club. But now, one thing about Jalen and Jasmine is they come fairly regularly, so she will be back. Say something before we have to. Close. Well, I just want to say thank you for Ms. V for persuading me to be here because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be really where I am today. I probably, wow. I probably wouldn't even be having the good grace that I have. And she's really like helped me a lot with pursuing me to make sure that I have good grades. I stay where I need to be and not in nobody else's drama or business. Wow. I just mind minds 
Thank and you. Make sure I Thank stay you. good. When I talk about those relevant resources, the Smart Club, Valencia brought us. Thank you so much, Dylan. I'm sorry that we had to cut that off and uh, uh, get uh, to the end uh, so quickly. Anthony Madry, Frank Kirkdahl, thank you so very much. Here's your announcer, DeQuay Wilson. Thank you all so much for joining us on the radio broadcast that challenges and congratulates serious students who work all year getting ready to waive your grades at the heroes who sacrifice for you to make the grade. <laughs> for all schools across the USA, free access to Carl Boyd's spoken morning messages honoring veterans and motivating students. Go to our Stoops for Boots website uh, to close. We will repeat, or will we will say for the first time, I am That's so right. sorry, today's <laughs> message here is Carl Boyd. See, what I had in mind was starting with a message and then repeating it at the end, and instead we did the whole theme song. We won't do that every week. But to students across the USA, your Stoots for Boots message uh, for this day, September 1st, we look to our services to protect us. We look to our students to pro project us. This is Wave Your Grades on KUAW. My name is Carl Boyd, thanking all of our guests, thanking Louis George uh, Walker, saying, Gracious God and wonderful Wanda, I'm on my way home. I generally don't speak a lot. It is my philosophy. I have two ears.